Hi, welcome back to the Jack and Glenn channel. I'm Jackie. And I'm her husband, Glenn. For 20 years. Yes, it's for 20 years. Glenn. For 20 years. <laughs> oh, man, what we're going to talk, we, you know, we want to talk about a little bit, to dig in a little bit more about Johnny and Bow. This past week of Married at First Sight was pretty deep, it was pretty interesting. Um, and, you know, Johnny, I don't know, I'm not going to say he shocked people. Because our faith was always there. Mm -hmm. um, but he really showed his true colors this past week. And we did a review on it. Uh, if you want to hear us talk about all the couples, make sure you click the link above my head. But we just wanted to talk about Johnny and Bao today and where they progressed in just a matter of a week, in a matter of two or three weeks. Because what we saw a couple weeks ago, Johnny and Bao had, we thought they had turned the curve. Right. You know, came down a different street. Uh, Johnny had already had his issues earlier where he went home and cleared his mind, but then he realized that, you know, Bao was the one that he wanted to be with. We saw Johnny and Bao uh, have a romantic dinner. We saw Johnny and Bao uh, dress up as the doctors, uh, Dr. Vivian um, asked him to, and we saw Johnny and Bao consummate their marriage. But all that wasn't enough for Johnny and Bao, for Johnny, because Johnny is still missing something in their relationship, and we saw Johnny do, just take a turn for the worse this week. Mm. Yeah, um, I don't know, I don't even know where to start with him. It's like, um, if self-sabotage was a person. <laughs> right. You know, Zach and Michaela, he made a little joke about, ooh, I love me some self-sabotage. But, honestly, Johnny is self-sabotaging. It's like, he's just nitpicking the relationship apart and he's talking out of both sides of his neck, doing it too. It's like I feel like she's um, she's one way with around y'all, and she's somebody different around me. Well, honestly, when you're in a relationship, I promise you, I don't act around everybody the way I act around him. I definitely don't act around everybody. Act around everybody the way I act around but her. But it's also not drastically different no. than what people have seen. So I think myself with Bao, like she explained it on the episode, of course at work when I'm with my coworkers, I'm corporate Bao. When I'm with my family and friends, I'm family and friends Bao. When I'm out in public, uh, you know what I'm saying? And then there's married Bao. Married Bao. Married Bao. <laughs> <laughs> but of course you sh in your marriage you should be able to let your guard down a little bit more. It's almost like family and friends Bao, but it's you still, you got that intimacy thing. You know what I'm saying? You're getting to know each other. So, for him to say, and then, let's let's add this on. Because we've seen this plenty of times. When those cameras turn on, it purposely or not on purpose, you do act differently. Because you're thinking, the world is going to see me. Mm -hmm. Some people, it might be the nerves. It's nervousness. That makes them act differently. But the way Johnny talked about Bao and just talked about her, and I'm like, you're not even saying nothing about what you're doing. Nothing. And but it's only been the thing about it, it's been this case was about gourmet dinner, right? Mm -hmm. In the previous episode about by her um showing him emotion or touching him. Uh, physically, mm -hmm. and so then it was about you know Bow's doing too much because now she's, she's acting all giddy. She's acting all giddy. Well, that's her lover. It's always something with her, and he's looking for something per perfect. And guess what? She's not perfect. Neither is he. I think Dr. Vivian told him that before too. I wanted to Viviana. Viviana. Viviana told him that too. That neither one of them are perfect. But again, he's trying to fit her in this box, and she's not in that box, and she's trying to. Bend over backwards mm -hmm. and do everything to please him that we see on camera. Let me put it that way. That we see on camera. Even this episode, we didn't talk about it too much in our review. That when even when he saw his family, she was still fixing individual dinner meal prepping for him. Mm -hmm. Which the meal prep is not for her, but it's for him. 
And so she's still trying to do the wifely duties, but he doesn't see that because it's not what he has uh, his ideal plan is for her uh, and what he expects for her to do. And then, you know, this is where Johnny, you know, we see him emotional the whole, so far this season a lot. We saw him with the guys emotion. I don't know what to do when they was in a restaurant. And, uh, and then, you know, Jose had to take him to the side and they talked to him and, and he was all crying and stuff like that. Which is the real Johnny? Right. right. What Johnny is the Johnny? The Johnny that's compassionate, that having fun with Bow when they're shooting guns, or the Johnny who's really emotional uh, and caught up to the fact that he does not like Bow, but he doesn't want her to hurt his, her, hurt her feelings. You know, he's putting on he's putting on a front because we don't we have not seen the real Johnny. Which one is it? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's the key there. And I think Bow hasn't seen the real Johnny. Is it the Johnny that's sensitive and emotion to, emotional to her, or is it the Johnny that has rage because he has rage in him? He has anger. He, he's, he's a person. He's hurt. Johnny is hurt from his daddy leaving him. Mm -hmm. So things that he experienced in his family. Because we got to not realize, too, we got to also realize that Johnny's been over 100 dates. Right. He's found something in everybody. In the 100 dates, he found one thing that he does not like about each person. And, it, and he's even said about Bao, if we was dating, I would not have came back. Mm -hmm. Which means he doesn't like her. He needs to, I said this in our other review, he needs to take the um, opinion or the, the mindset of Mila. Mila was like, are there negatives? Yes. But if I stay focused on the negative and all the negatives, it'll take me down a rabbit hole that I can't get out of. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, he's been on 100 dates. Who goes on 100 dates? It's somebody that's nitpicking. Pastor Cal said it. He said, is there someone else? Johnny's like, no, it's not anyone else. But Pastor Cal put in perspective, it is somebody else. You got her competing against an imaginary woman. A perfect woman in your mind. That's who the other person is. Yeah. And you will never find a spouse that will fit your perfect image of what you want a spouse to be. But because the other thing is, none of us are perfect. We all have our issues. And I hate to say this, but not I hate to say this. I'm, I mean, I'm saying not to be too churchy, but God ain't looking for you to be perfect. Right. <laughs> he don't expect you to be perfect. So why should, as a flawed person, you expect another flawed person to be perfect when you got issues. His All I kept thinking was, it's a term, and I want to give you the definition. Johnny's emotions are so labile, easily altered. He just flipped back and forth, back and forth. He got his lip po poked out one time. He in the back of the room screaming. He's throwing a temper tantrum, and then he's up the next. Ah. Uh, I'm mad because you lied. You said you cook gourmet meals and you don't. Yeah. In front of in front of Jose. Then you go in front of Pastor Cal. Pastor Cal's like, well, does she fix them or not? Well, she does, but she don't do it by herself. We do it together. Did she do it? She, she forgot to add when she was anybody else that Johnny helps me commit gourmet meals. But so that's what, oh, so you're mad because mad she didn't include you. She mad. He's mad because he didn't get any credit. Look, if you leave, mm -hmm. talk about what he wants. Right. He wants her to give her credit. He wants give him credit. Give him credit. He wants him. Uh, you know, he wants her to always to point out all the good things that he's doing. He likes affirmation, so he wants the affirmation from Bao the way that he wants it. And, but he's not willing to give any to her, mm -hmm. even though it's minute that she's doing the small things, the, the tedious thing. Again, the tedious things that he thinks. But in marriage, you have to pay attention to details by making sure that there's gas in the car, and that's a small detail. Making sure that the, uh, the house is clean, wipe, the, um, the oven is wiped down, the refrigerator is wiped down. Uh, to make sure that the lunch is packed so that person doesn't have to do it. To make sure you don't squeeze the toothpaste in the middle, that you squeeze it at the end. Just to make sure that, you know, those are, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, but those, those are the small things, but that you may not recognize because he, think about what he said. He said, I give her the, I buy gifts, and I, uh, I take her out to eat dinner, and all. He's naming big stuff that you can see. Not things that really makes a marriage work. But it's a classic example. He said it about her, but he's not realizing it about him. Mm -hmm. It's a classic example of 
you loving somebody in your love language yeah. instead of theirs. True. He's he's giving her gifts and planning these special things, and that's not the way she receives love. Love no. for her, it might be, hey, I made the bed, I did. It's the and she. That's what he's saying. She's doing for me what she wants to do. But that's not how I receive it. But he's also not giving her credit that, like she said, I'm being more affectionate and that's not me. Because mm -hmm. I know that's how he receives love. Right. So you're knocking the fact that she's doing the acts of service and acts of service is not my thing. But you're ignoring the fact that she is doing the physical touch. Her whole family, the brothers, the roommate told her she's not the huggy huggy type. Yeah. And here she is holding your hand. She's got your her arm in your arm. She's comforting you. That's not she's, her. She's being the big spoon in the bed. That is, you know, that's it. So she's coming outside of her comfort zone, mm -hmm. but he does not see that. And I think what Bao has to do, she has to point that out to him. Like, these are the things that not just say, oh, I'm doing a lot. And he'd be like, what? What are you doing? Okay, you want to know what I'm doing? <laughs> Here's the list of the things I'm doing. Now, and what she has to do is also say, okay, what is it that... I'm not doing that you would like me to do. Mm -hmm. And that is not an argument. And be specific. And be, specific. And, and be real. Don't give me mm -hmm. no crap. And yeah, and be specific. Don't give me crap. And But that's a real conversation because, again, you're not dating. You're all married. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an accelerated process. He doesn't know. There's some things that she, you know what I'm saying? So let's let's write it down. Let me know so I can know which ones to cross off. We look at Gil. Gil recognized there's some things that he needed to do for Marilla. And he started he started doing those things. Because that, okay, I'm taking a mental note. This is what my wife likes. And so I'm going to start doing X, Y, Z. And Johnny has to do that. And he has to tell Bao, this is what I like. And she and she started doing those things. And maybe, just maybe. But for him to talk out inside of his neck when it was with Pastor Cal, which is what makes him public enemy number one. Mm -hmm. What makes him a, I don't care how mad you are. I don't care how upset you get. You don't put your wife out there like that. No. He didn't do it at the dinner table when he when he could have, but he did it in front of Pastor Cal and in front of millions of people. If you could give me anyone else, I would date anyone else but her. Anyone else but her. This is a person that you slept with. This is a person that you break, broke bread with. This is a person who took you back after you left and went to your apartment for a couple of days. This is a person who helped you out in different situations since y'all be married. But anybody else, anybody but her, that means you negated everything else that she did for you. Up to that point. Yeah, and um, I think you make a good point saying that at the table, you didn't want to say anything. But then here we are with Pastor Cal, and you unleash the beast. And again, it's a classic example of people, um, you holding it in, holding it in, holding it in. And then when it comes out, same thing with Jose. It comes out in an explosion and it just, you unleash your fury on everybody else. Like, that, so, like, that is the worst in, in a marriage. Deal with people, period. Mm -hmm. It's a way that you can say that you dislike something or don't like something or would rather it be a certain way without demeaning and degrading the person. Yeah. It's, you could say it, like, you could, he could have said, you know, she's not really my type. I'm having a hard time with this match. I don't see how we're compatible. Um, I feel like maybe it would have been easier if it was somebody else. Not You could have literally uh, matched me with somebody else and I'd have been happy. You yeah. know? Yeah, his verbiage. We learned all the time. It's about tone, pitch, and voice. And so tone, p tone pitch, and voice in the message. Because his message could have been much easier and still got the same point across. I mean, he went straight from the... He went from, he went from a butter knife... <laughs> to the <laughs> to a freaking machete to the machete right and, and so he cut and for Bal to sit there and take it on the chin she's good because a lot of people wouldn't have did that that is the time where I I would have liked to have seen him come back lady lady y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't know Bal y'all don't see her cause after the cameras went off after they talked to Pastor Cal I would. You know, I wouldn't have blamed her if he, if the next day he was like, "Man, she cussed me out. She laid me out. She, you just you you do not embarrass." Now, mind you, yes, in front of TV, you know, cameras. Let's all that aside. But in front that? of Pastor Cal, 
I, you know, I almost, um, I would rather him have said that. Yeah, off camera. And, but I mean, I would rather with an expert than with the whole group. But, so, I, on that, okay, that's fine. But, you didn't say anything. He didn't say anything at the table, but not with his mouth. But he certainly said it with his actions. You might as well have said it there. Because yeah. they were like, what's they, going on? You know what? We, we forget sometimes. And I think this is where my my um, uh, mind of knowing a production comes in. There wasn't the only one in the room. Mm -hmm. So you said that not just in front of the camera for millions of people to watch, but the producers, the people that's been there in your home, all around to, to degrade this young lady like that. As a man, is disrespectful. Um, and... Then to add injury to the insult, or before that, add injury to the insult, she had prepared to meet your family. Y'all have talked about to meet your family. She was learning everyone's name in Mandarin so she could get it right and so she could be a perfectionist. And not only, not the day of, not two days before, not three days before, but the morning of. Mm -hmm. Her preparing to go meet your family to have a fun, enjoyable time at a family barbecue where it could have brought you guys together. Mm hmm. You said, I don't feel like you were going. I don't feel like you should go. Now, brother, have your girl ready to go somewhere, and then you just pull the rug out from under, I'm going by myself. That's not going to work with too many women. It may work with Bao because it's TV, but brother, if you don't stay I married to her. It didn't really work with her. It didn't really work with her. But not. Nah, I don't. I think she's, I'm not saying she's checked out, but he is public enemy number one. He might want to sleep with an eye open. Because that's not going, to, that doesn't fly. Johnny is disrespectful. Um, you know, people talking about, is he on Chris's level? I don't know. I can't even say that yet. You know what I'm saying? Because at least Chris was honest from day one, right? He was honest from day one. He didn't lie. He was honest from day one. He eventually told Paige, whatever way he told Paige. But Johnny has been lying to Bao all this time. Knowing that he wasn't attracted to her, knowing that he didn't like her, knowing that he didn't want to be with her, but yet he was still willing to sleep with her, still willing to allow her to conform to the things that he wanted her to do. Oh, still we know her. that like, like don't have nothing to do with having <laughs> sex with you. People have sex with people they don't like all the time, which is terrible. I'm not saying it's right. That's terrible. That is, that's a whole nother podcast uh, video. That's not what sex was intended for. No. To just please your flesh. You know. And you don't even like the person. Like you get up and you just be like. Get your clothes and get out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> that's a side note. But yeah. He he really shouldn't. I think. I don't even know. Like I said. He's so labile. It's almost. It's almost. A little oh. bipolar. It, it's a little bipolar. But look at, look at who his best friend is. And I want to test that for a minute. His buddy is Jose, right? My mom always told me birds of the feather flock together. flock together. And look how Jose came out of nowhere and just shot off. Maybe, I'm going to use my hypothetical imagination for a minute. Maybe Rachel called Jose Johnny because she saw some Johnny attributes in Jose. She saw... The things that was what it was leading to, and she's like, you know, John. Uh, I mean, Jose, because Jose blew up. We got a Hurricane K, and we got two Hurricane J's. Well, one's a tsunami, tsunami Jose. I gotta come up with a name for Johnny. Tornado Johnny. I don't know. We'll, 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 have <laughs> we'll, to get we'll come up with a name with that. But but again, but for real, the birds of the feather flock together. Look at who he's gravitating to. A guy who blows up instantly. Johnny doesn't blow. He holding it inside. At least he had enough sense to scream in the room like he screamed like a banshee. And yelling and screaming. And she was like, what's going on? He's howling like a wolf. And comes out and says... She's not compatible. I'm not... Like, what, what are you looking for for compatibility? Yes. That's what I'm trying to understand. I don't think it's a compatibility thing. I think it's just... You are picking apart her personality. Yeah. You're picking apart her personality. It's, it's, not, it's not fair. Because she could really pick you apart. She could pick him apart. She really could. And she could throw him underneath the bus. But that's not what she's going to do right now. Now, I think when it's all said and done, she might throw him underneath the bus. But right now, she's going to try to be the... She wants. To, she said it. She said it when he asked her in the kitchen. 
yes, I'm committed to this marriage. I will say yes on, the, uh, on decision day because she doesn't want to give up. Mm -hmm. And she wants to be committed to the process. He is not committed to the process, and he's really ready to give up. He's been ready to give up since day one. After the honeymoon, when it was on the honeymoon, he's been ready to give up. Now he's finding his out. Again, back to your point, self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, um, I want to go back comparing Johnny to Chris. You know, Chris was trying to find his way out too. Um, I wouldn't say that Johnny's as bad as Chris. It's, it's a different level. I think the difference was like Chris was very insulting to um his was an insult to Paige physically. Mm -hmm. Um and Johnny is he his is an insult to the inner bow. Oh. Um and um I think the difference is and I'm saying this from a um, African American female perspective, is that the difference with Chris is it's like African American females battle so much with their uh, their looks physically, the physical aesthetics, the you know hair and skin color and shape of nose and lips and stuff, and um, the the image of what pretty is in in society so for him to you know cut her down like that that was a little bit different but um yeah for jo johnny hasn't yet to say he hasn't said anything about her physically he said he like her butt right <laughs> yeah he, he's he's been he's been very complimentary about right. her physically but i think um it's it's even worse when you critique and criticize who a person really is. It's mm -hmm. like, what can I do? Same thing with looks. Yeah. But you can have plastic surgery and all like that. But the the real you, the who you are, for somebody to basically say who you are is not good enough. That's that's um that cuts to the bone. That's, that's that, me. that cuts to the bone. And like Johnny, really, again, you ain't all that, bruh. It's, it's manipulation and mentally abusive behavior. Because he's mentally abusing her and is breaking her down. He may not be yelling and screaming. Mm -hmm. uh, he may not be doing throwing, kicking things and throwing things. But I, that, the biggest lie I ever told was words don't hurt. Oh, they Stick, do. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but, but words will never hurt me, right? That has been the biggest lie ever told. Because guess what? Words do hurt. And if you saw Bao's face uh, when he said that, she looked like if she could go crawl underneath a rock, mm -hmm. if she she would go crawl underneath the rock, um, she was embarrassed, she was hurt, and for a husband to, again, manipulate abusively uh, with words and to degrade his wife, that is terrible. Um, and Johnny has moved up the chain for people. And the public enemy number one, he's up there. He's up there with some, some, of, the, some of the best... Uh, well, not some of the worst. Some of the best some, of the worst. Some of the best of the worst <laughs> on this show. He's up there with Matt. He's up there with Luke. He's up, He's there, up there with, with Zach. Zach. For yeah. us, like um, the uh, um, the Instagram page that we follow, one person that we felt like should be included, we feel like Will should be in there. He's up there with Will. Keith, Keith, Keith be from there. Keith the Iris should be in there. Um, and not because they didn't stay married. It's just because of all the manipulation that was the, going And the way they treated their spouse and how on. they just... We're so nitpick. Like, I, bro, I'm trying to tell you. If if you go nitpick and pick somebody apart, you should be single. You should be. You're not ready for marriage if you don't understand that marriage is a give and take. If you don't understand that marriage uh, is compromise. If you don't understand that um, I have to, the good has to outweigh the bad in a marriage. Not that there's not going to be any bad. But you have to make a conscious decision to let the good outweigh the bad. Yeah. But for the 10 things that your spouse does right, you can't be focused on the one. And that's where Johnny's at. He's focused on the one thing because all he kept saying was gourmet, gourmet meals. You can't, the, the, that, those 10 things she does right may weigh more than the one thing that she doesn't. If we put on a scale, it, it will drop down here. Well, or just like you said, and, and then... Again, labile. He's so labile. Yeah. 
So he tells her, oh, you didn't cook the gourmet meals by yourself. We cooked it together. So in order for you to be truthful, I'm expecting you to cook gourmet meals by yourself. But on the flip side, I want you, why are you doing yoga by yourself? Wake me up in the morning right. and we can do yoga together. Why are you doing this by yourself? Come get me and we can do that together. So she don't know when do you want to do it together and when do you want to do it apart. I, I don't, that's too much for me to try to figure out. And that's where, that, there, there lies the confusion because she doesn't know which way to move. And when you don't have clear objectives and marriages, you bring confusion in. And when confusion, there's nothing that's able to stand, nothing to be able to take shape. He's confused, so she's going to be confused. And because he's, she's confused, he's confused. And now they never get, get on the same page because he, there's no clear picture. That's why you sit down when you're married or even when you're dating and you have rules of engagement. You understand what the rules are for this family or this house. This is how we want to treat each other. This is what I understand you like. Okay, this is what I like as well. You Okay, let me sleep in the morning till 10 o'clock. Fine, cool, let's do that. Okay, you know, uh, let's, let me, let's go work out every afternoon at 6 o'clock. I mean, at 6 o'clock p.m. Whatever case, but you have to set those and establish those rules. And he hasn't done that. And because he hasn't done that, he wants Bao to fit into this box. And, and when she doesn't fit in it, he's frustrated and he doesn't know how to handle it. Newsflash for all these people on the show, that goes to Ryan, Jose, every marriage is going to have its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Every marriage is not going to be perfect. Every marriage is going to have good days, it's going to have some bad days. But it's how you handle it, the perspective that you have, and what you're going to do. And right now, Johnny, you're my public enemy number one. Because you don't know how to handle your marriage for Bao. And Pastor Cal has not really fully explained. Maybe he did. But the clip that they didn't show really explained what he needed to do to get back in Bao good graces. I don't think he cares about getting her good Not a good graces. I, I mean, I but think... To, to, get, to get back to a um, reasonable, sensible, kind person. Yeah. It's some steps he needs to take to get back to... But he has a good to, person. And we're wrapping up. He has to listen to reason as well. Because his mm. family is giving him reason. Oh my gosh. Yes, his, his family. Everybody at the barbecue said the same thing. He was like, I want that high school romance. That's puppy love. <laughs> that's, that's, honestly, that stuff that you did in middle school, high school, that was lust. Yeah. So he wants lust. He wants a lusty marriage. As opposed to a loving marriage. And I think that was his uncle. He was like, you're not in high school no more, though. No, nah, there's a difference. You're not in high school anymore. His aunt said the same thing. Both his aunt, Allison, and then the lady that was sitting at the table, they both were like, what are you doing? <clears throat> no. he, he, he needs to listen to reason. It, what good does it do to have experienced people, knowledgeable, knowledgeable people, wise counsel around you if you're not going to take what they say and apply it complete the process complete the process try everything in the process and make it work if you want to make it work if he wants to make the relationship work he'll take care of the advice he'll listen to the advice and do the advice if he doesn't want the relationship to work he's not gonna listen to the advice and i think johnny is at the point now he's at a crossroad johnny's already out he's gonna try to get back in so people can uh say he tried but I think Johnny's already checked out, and I don't think he's coming back in. And he'll probably remain on my public enemy number one list mm -hmm. and tell him and Bao reconcile because he owes her an apology. And there's nothing wrong with apologizing in your marriage or in your relationship. He owes her an apology. Just like I don't hear all y'all asking all out there saying Johnny owes her, uh, Bao an apology as he, like Chris O. Page. Right. You know, every, oh, he needs to apologize, blah, blah, blah. No, Johnny needs to apologize to, um, Page, uh, to Bao. And same thing as Jose. Jose needs to apologize. And guess what? Apology does not mean the behavior has changed. And Bao needs to look at Johnny. Like, okay, you apologize. I accept your apology. But guess what? I need, you, I need to see change in your behavior. Mm -hmm. Needs to see change in your behavior. Johnny is public enemy number one. Hey, they, they used to be my favorites, too. <laughs> Them and Michaela and Zach. So disappointed. Hey, disappointed. Not saying they can't bounce back, but hey, it's going to be a rough road and a long road for them to bounce back from this. I think this was detrimental um, to what Bao's decision would be on decision day. All right, I think it's where Johnny's at, and we'll see next week because there's supposed to be fireworks mm -hmm. next week. Because next week, Johnny's supposed to tell her, if I hadn't dated you in 15 years, why would I do it now? You know, like, I, 
yeah, I chose not to date you because I wasn't attracted to you then. So Again, there he goes with the cutting stuff again. Cutting deep. Hey, run, Bow. Bow. Run. Bow's run. Better than me. <laughs> Bow is better. She's better than you, but run, Bow. Don't be in this verbally abusive relationship. Johnny, watch your tone. And other guys, if these guys meet on a regular basis, they should be telling each other to watch their tone. But nonetheless, hey, let us know what you thought about Johnny and Bow. Uh, how would you handle the situation if you was Bow? And do you agree with us? Is Johnny public enemy number one? Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification. And make sure you don't miss any of our reviews. Thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you down the road. Bye. Bye.